This is a Strontia major and it's probably one of my uh, favourite plants around the garden uh, for long term interest. Uh, it grows in spring very quick, produces this lovely type of leaf, a bit, bit like a geranium really, and it gets away quite early and produces flower quite early. So for me this particular variety uh, started growing quite early on in spring, produced all of its seeds, I collected the seeds, it went over and I simply took all the seed heads off, uh, just at the stems there. Um, and, and the reason I want to mention this one is because it is such a good doer. This particular variety is called Muriel's Gift. It's one that was uh, given to me by uh, the famous Jill Richardson of the Jill Richardson group of Astrantes. It was given to me by her sister called Muriel, who's no longer with us. Uh, so, so I named it in a, a honour, really, uh, as Muriel's Gift. Now, I love having these all over, dotted all over, and I'm spreading them bit by bit. And because this is a variety, I'm trying to get it around the garden more. So it's in there, but the flower is just amazing. And I really do like it. I really like this one. It's got those black tips, and this is the second time it's flowering. We're now in September, and it's producing yet again this type of flower. Now, a lot of people think once you cut these back, you don't get any more flowers, but you do. And there's proof that you do, um, if you do it right. Now, I've got another one here. I'm just going to show you this other one. And when you first cut them back, this was a late flower. When you first cut them back, this is what you can expect to see. Bit of a mess like that. Look, almost looks like it's going into autumn. And it actually is going into autumn. But believe it or not, if I took away all the dead plants in there, all the dead leaves in there, all these new ones would come up till we get the first frost. So there's a flower head or a seed head now and all the little seeds out there will pop off go around the garden and self set around now one thing you must be careful with this one it's called Hattie's pincushion but it, it, it can be quite a, a bit of a nuisance at times if you're not an experienced gardener and what you need to do is you need to go around find them and pull them out because you'll have way too many but the interesting thing is is that uh, that if you leave in the garden along with other varieties it's very promiscuous and this is how we get beautiful plants like this so it'll do really well now a lot of people think that these are shade lovers and they're, they're to be honest what i found up here at grassy bottom is that these are part shade lovers and they do really well for me in part shade if you can get them into a bit more of, of the sun you'll probably find that you'll get some better colors now there are some great plants out there uh, if you're looking for a sterile form, there's one called Astrantia Roma, nice little one. Uh, I'll show you that one in a minute, and that's a fantastic little plant to get. Uh, and obviously you won't get no seeding with that one, but this one you do. And then there's another one called Involcarata, which, which refers really to the ruffles around the neck. Those leaves at the top end here, these ones here, that's where it refers to. So it's Astrantia Involcarata, and it's called Shaggy or Marjorie Fish, and it's Possibly the same plant as far as I'm concerned, and it's a white one. So if you're looking for something white, there's that one. There's one called White Star that I'm, I'm not quite sure about. They say it's an improvement, not sure. Um, the jury's out on that one. So that's looking really good here against this black elder because the colours, the purples, suit it really, really well. And it looks really nice. So this one's a Strantia Roma, and it's the sterile one that I've just talked about. It produces these pinkish coloured heads. And again, this is a good example of why they call it Hattie's Pincushion, because it really looks like a pincushion in its flower. Uh, and again, it's producing even more seed heads or flower heads and seeds. These are turning into seeds. These here are turning into seeds. You can see the brown ones there turning into seeds. Now, I wouldn't bother with those. I'd just chop them off because uh, because it is a sterile form, it'll not produce any viable seed. In fact, no seed at all that's going to grow. So the plant doesn't know that. So you can chop them off and it'll send up even more. And if, if the season continues to be fairly warm as it is today, uh, then that will be, that will be uh, coming back with more flowers on it. And it's only a small one, this one, I've noticed. Uh, I've had it a couple of seasons now, and it never gets really very big, so it's probably one for the front of a border rather than 
sort of in the middle or not at the not at the back anyway for any of them really although some of them can get quite tall so that one's uh, a strantia roma and he's a sterile form so i just wanted to show you this one here and this is the one i just talked about the one called shaggy or marjorie fish is a white hybrid uh, and it's really nice and it is a quite a strong one and it does get i think taller than the other two i've just shown you uh, this one actually went up to about a foot and a half to two foot in its flower. Now they're gone. I chopped those back and as far as I'm aware, it's not bringing anything back. It is a strong grower. It's lovely. Uh, it's a lovely grower and it's starting to produce lots more leaves. It'll not do a lot now because we're too far into uh, towards the back end of the year. But it might be okay. It might try and send up some flowers, but I very much doubt that they're actually going to be any good. Nevertheless, if you can get hold of that one, um, that's a Strantia involucrata. I think that's how it's said, uh, and one called Shaggy or Marjorie Fish, practically the same. The most common one you'll find at the minute is Superstar, which is also a white one. So there we go. So that is just to show you a uh, three varieties of a Strantia, and you really should get these because they really are good for your mixed borders. A good doer won't cause you no problems and flower the socks off and once they start flowering they carry on flowering for quite some time and we'll just end it on this one here where i started and i just love this and i get excited every spring with this one because i know it's going to produce this wonderful flower so i've got loads of them spread around now they're looking really good uh, and this one does set seed that's viable and some will look like this and some won't. Some will look pretty bog standard. And they come in all different shades of reds and purples. And as you saw with the last one or the one before, it goes to pink and to white. So that's the Strantias. Any soil really suits them. As far as I'm aware, I'm up on heavy chalk here and they're doing okay on my soil. I've had them in sand and they've done okay in sand. And I've had them in just ordinary soil and obviously they're gonna do okay in ordinary soil. So that's the Strantia, well worth adding to your garden. I'll talk to you on the next one. Ta-da!